Hare Krishna, World Razor, Sabina and Raja here. I just wanted to say my uh, usual line, let's watch, <laughs> but we are doing something different today. Yeah, today we are going to go through the comments section <laughs> of our Bhagavad Gita videos. Because I remember at the beginning when we introduced it, we said we would be engaging in the comments mm -hmm. and keep the discussion going. And so I have read some of the comments and I was like, you know, blown away by some of the insights and additional details that we weren't aware of. So just to keep our education going and flowing, we decided we're going to react to the comments. I hope this journey will be transformative for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Divine <laughs> music. Oblivious catalyst. Yeah, I love this one. So, yeah, just explaining how incredibly massive the armies are. Oh, so, okay. So an Akshauhini is described in the Mahabharata as a battle formation consisting of 21,870 <laughs> chariots. Oh, chariots. 21,870 elephants, 65,610 oh, horses, and 109,350 infantry. So that's... <laughs> So, oh, wow. so that's like a, oh my god an action huni so maybe like a, a battle formation so one army basically right this is one army so it is mentioned in the Mahabharata that in the kurukshetra war the pandava army consisted of seven of those so one million five hundred and thirty thousand nine hundred warriors yeah one million five hundred thousand warriors and the Kaurava army consisted what? of 11 of those formations 2,405,700 warriors thus the total count of warriors who participated in the war being 3,936,600 at that time that does just that's mind-blowing right I don't know, I get emotional again. Yeah. <laughs> People might not know why, <laughs> what's going on. That's a lot of men. Because that's a lot of people and I don't know I just get emotional also when I see people coming together. Mm. You know, I mean this is yeah to fight a war, but still I don't know. There are <laughs> so many people together fighting for what they think is bright and mm -hmm. um even just having that bond, imagine like what? One army like one million five hundred thousand people mm -hmm. on one side having this bond together oh i don't know it's beautiful yeah. it's like and what's also million. what's also really fascinating about that is that the smaller army the pandava army is technically the good guy army with krishna on their side fight, fighting for righteousness and goodness and honor and virtue and dharma right and then the other army was the bigger army so showing how mm -hmm. you know the good guys just with their courage and their honor and their bravery, you know, and with God on their side, literally rose to the occasion and defeated the bigger army. You know, when I envisioned this war, I envisioned, I don't know, a field, <laughs> a field with, you know, full of army, like, you know, yeah. we'll have to like a field. This is like, what? this is like. It, it's a whole it's almost like a little country it's a, it's a plane <laughs> it's we'll like... have to go to kurukshetra when we're in india right and see where it took place it's still there oh my god yeah wow ankush zap yeah this is a good one so the few points so the armies were in the ratio of 11 to 7 so i had the numbers right 11 to 7 oh, nice. but it wasn't kingdom wise right it was uh, armies right so this, the armies, not the kingdoms, I guess. So our armies across Asia fought in the war, not just present in India. So kingdoms across the seas mm -hmm. mentioned too. So prior to war, Krishna sent three important peace proposals to Karavas and being Krishna himself as peace messenger during third time. But arrogant Duryodhanan, out of frustration, tried to imprison Krishna. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, well. Try that. And that, so of course, resulted in the end of all peace talks. But I think that's fascinating that the war was so massive that there was armies from other countries as well mm. right so from other places wow yeah one comment was saying like china and okay. you know, other places maybe them vikas mm -hmm. when you say it, or i realize god is driving your chariot i literally literally got water in my yeah. eyes i don't know why but it's an amazing feeling when i realize lord krishna is with me every time absolutely 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we can feel Lord Krishna with us during our Bhagavad Gita special as we're studying it. And of course, yeah, the Supreme Lord is everywhere at all times and totally aware of anybody studying his teachings. So definitely with us and all of us, you know, watching and diving into these teachings. Incident of birth of Kauravas. Oh yeah, this one's interesting. Yeah, one sage Vyas uh, visited us. Dinapur Gandhari made sure of his pleasant stay and in the process he was so happy with her helping nature she received boon according to her wish of a hundred sons and a daughter. After two years of pregnancy she had a lump of flesh came out of her. When Sage Vyasa came he asked for a hundred and one jars full of ghee. He cut the flesh into two halves. He put one half into a jar which later became Dushala, the only daughter. He cut another half into further 100 pieces and then put into jars, so 100 jars, and then later became 100 sons. So Dushala was youngest, Duryodhana was eldest. So this is, yeah, there was another comment that we might get to saying <laughs> okay. that they were, like, they were like test tube babies. What test tube? Well, babies that were grown in jars. Oh so my God. Nowadays it's called like test tube babies where the embryo was fertilized in a tube. Right? Oh. So just another another indication of quite advanced scientifically if that is indeed how that happened. Wow. <laughs> Why not? Anything is possible it's in this divine creation. Craziness. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Safe soil. <laughs> uh, yeah. So another one touching on this topic. Don't be shocked. There were 100 sons who were actually test tube babies. Oh, is that the yeah, I also thing? ignored this for years, but when I thought about it, I was like, how the hell they thought about test tube babies <laughs> literally thousands of years ago? So test tube baby technology is yet to come in our modern society. So I know people will fight over that. Yeah, it is. It's one of those things that it's kind of the more kind of out there <laughs> yeah. aspects of the of the story and it's not technically that important it is what it is so mm -hmm. there was a hundred sons however those sons manifested is what it is right yeah. so it's the teachings ultimately that matter does sabina become a devotee of krishna instead of buddha from now <laughs> <laughs> I read that before and I, I think I replied. I think I said all are one, mm -hmm. all is one. Um, so ultimately, it, it, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter if I worship Krishna or Buddha because but in the end, trend, like even worshiping Buddha has the potential for me to become one with Krishna. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, no, I love Buddha, but I love Krishna now too. So I'll I'll worship both, um, and I I ask for blessings and uh, from both. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, when I pray to Supreme Lord Krishna, I usually always pray to Jesus and Buddha at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, Roger, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna. I always say, Dear Lord Jesus, Supreme yeah. Lord Krishna, and Lord Shakyamuni Buddha. Arjun is also an avatar of Krishna. He asked those questions and played that role so that common people could understand through his questions. Yeah, that's what very do you cool. think? Uh, totally, everything technically is an oh, avatar. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right? There's the divine play, and then, so of um. course, Krishna has something to teach, so he's gonna, you know, set it up in such a way where. Oh, you know, yeah, so things yeah. will happen, kind of oh. knowingly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, I love this so much. <laughs> so, yeah, very cool. Before reading Gita, remember this Lord Krishna is in the state of Brahma, formless reality. Yeah, so he's teaching yeah. from that state. Yeah. yeah. Totally, I agree, right? He's te teaching from the ultimate. Yeah, no. You know, and even if he's beyond and transcendent to reality, in the ultimate, in our sense, because we are in the material existence, so the ultimate for us is, you know, the unmanifest, the Godhead, right? The infinite field of consciousness, right? Not to say that Krishna doesn't have a form beyond that, right? You know, they don't contradict mm. each other, right? So in our reality, though, everything is manifesting from some one infinite source, right? Yeah. So B, one of my favorite commentators, <laughs> Sri Krishna didn't fight because philosophically it means that the Param Atman or the At Atman, the Supreme Soul, always is far above the karmic world and acts basically as a guide or guru for the person in it. 
And it is the person that has to decide and perform the action or the karma kairak, doer of action. This basically means that God does not interfere in anyone's karma or sets a precedent or destiny for any individual. God says, it is you yourself setting a destiny for yourself through your actions. I am your Atman, or your Atman is part of me, which contains voluminous knowledge and flows from it copious amounts of wisdom that shows the right path. However, you must reach within for that info. So yeah, very profound. Mm -hmm. Hence, this is to dispel the notion that God creator writes well in advance what each being is supposed to do rather than it being the being whose actions decide his fate which mimics the true nature of the universe. For every action, there is a consequence. Mm -hmm. In the material world, a lot of people think, why doesn't God just come and make the world better and change things? Mm -hmm. Well, then he would have to take away our free will, and then we wouldn't actually mm -hmm. be an independent creation. So I see the divine play as Krishna being the source of everything. Oh, and then it gives the it. creation's ego, which grants them huh. free will. And that's the only thing that makes them an actual creation that is unique. Because even though he's the source of everything oh. and everything, you know, like Krishna is literally the manifestation of all beings in the universe. And he's the consciousness beyond our senses, right? Mm -hmm. But because of the ego and the maya, right, the illusion, then, then we think that we're independent creations. And that's very thinking is what makes us independent. Yeah. So that's how we exist in Krishna's mind as a created being, right? If we didn't have that, then what would be the point? Because he would be in control of everything, but by giving them the free will, then we actually become an independent creation. And then that's the <laughs> whole, and that's what makes it so beautiful because then we need to choose to seek spirituality ourselves, right? And we're attracting our own through our actions. We're either rising or descending through the levels of consciousness and we can attain liberation, you know, in divine bliss and union with God or not. It's totally up to us. There's a lot of beings that would rather go into the hell realms and be, you know, demons, mm. you know, and strive after greed and wealth and power and the God realms and demigod realms and all of that. And that's entirely their choice. But ultimately, Krishna is all of them as well, right? Yeah. Everything is coming from one source. But what makes us, what makes it a creation of independent beings is the free will. I uh, love it. There's B again. <laughs> yes, B. Uh, so Sri Hanuman actually becomes the flag himself on calling mm -hmm. of Sri Krishna in a backstory. He Sorry, was, what? Sri Hanuman actually becomes the flag. Sri Hanuman is the flag, not just a no way. not just a picture on the flag, but he is the flag. Oh wow! Listen oh to, my God! Listen to the rest of it. Becomes the flag on calling of Sri Krishna in a backstory. He was asked to sit there by Sri Krishna to protect Arjuna's chariot by taking the blows of powerful weapons. No. Hanuman had a boon from Brahma that no weapon could harm him. This especially comes in use when he faces Karna, when each arrow of Karna sends the chariot on which God and Hanuman are sitting a bit back. Krishna applauds Karna for this as he tells Arjuna of the power of Dharma after the battle. Post-battle, when Lord Hanuman is asked to step outside as the job is done, Arjuna's chariot blows into pieces because of all the damage it took. Wow. That's when Arjun realizes the greatness of many of the warriors he fought, especially Karna, whom was his own elder brother, technically. This breaks his ego as Sri Krishna makes him realize the same. Sri Krishna always a destroyer of egos. Oh, Shri wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's wild. I and love it. Yeah, I didn't know that detail. So Hanuman is... So Hanuman was present too. Wow. Yeah. In... He's present too now too, by the way. Yeah, I found Hanuman. We have a statue. <laughs> so he represents devotion. So we have Buddha, devotion, and wisdom. Aww, yeah, that is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Oh yeah, here you will listen many names and the same person, so don't get confused. Mm. Um, yes. So uh, many people were given several names after achieving any tough task, and that's why. Ah, right, okay. so Krishna has many names, and even Arjuna, we're going to find, 
No, Krishna is going to refer to Arjuna. Yeah, yeah. I read that. So, oh, yeah. Many names. Because I, I honestly find the Gita Press version a little. How do you say? Like more complicated, the words. Dry, almost. Too. Yeah, too. It's almost too literal. Literal. Mm -hmm. um, so I started reading, I think it's in the living room, uh, 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 another uh, Gita version at the same time. So once we read it, once we react to it, um, afterwards I go and read uh, mm -hmm. a different version. And um, it was explained in there too. And it has like really nice foreword and everything. So it's a little bit more context. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy. It's, it's, it's a really poetic. Um, the mm -hmm. way it is written. Um, yeah, many things left out then in a way, but I don't know, it just goes right to the heart. Mm -hmm. It's like, afterwards I felt like, oh, I could really feel Arjun, like mm -hmm. really feel him. Oh. Yeah, yeah. so sometimes there's a place for literal, exact word for word translations, but yeah. oftentimes they lose the meaning and the essence and the mm -hmm. feeling of what's being yeah. expressed. So that's why some translators, you know, they change things slightly so that they can contain you yeah. know, and maintain, you know, the essence and the meaning, mm. which is often more profound than just the literal <laughs> words. Arjuna is overwhelmed in emotion, hence is unable to decide anything. Um, yeah, that is the problem, right? <laughs> when we have so many emotions and are so uh, carried away by all our thoughts and feelings and what is going on. And then yeah, the mind is uh, really clouded and you can't see clearly. And then mm -hmm. everything is just too much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's totally. why we have to settle all these emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Truth channel. Yes, so thanks for the clarification. So I got this wrong in the video. Um, so I thought Krishna was well known as God in that time. And I just pieced that together myself because I knew that he had a massive army. Mm. And then he was like a king and he had his own territory. And I was like, well, how did he get that if people didn't know that he was God? I thought mm. people recognized him as God and then he gathered a follower and then had an army because of that. But apparently he got all that oh, through some okay. other reason, which we don't know yet. So... No spoilers, I'm sure oh. we'll find out someday. Oh, okay. But anyways, apparently very few people very few people knew that Krishna was God. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, just like well, the chosen that's good, that's good to know. Chosen yeah. ones. So Krishna actually gave choice to both of them, Duryodhana mm -hmm. and Arjun, to choose what they want. Duryodhana chose the Narayani Sina, which is Krishna's army, argu arguably the strongest in the world. And Arjuna chose Krishna as a charioteer because Krishna promised that he won't fight himself in this war. Um, mainly because, yeah, he can end it less than a second. So that is, <laughs> you know, yeah. is that all the comment? That is all of the comment, yeah. Yeah, so this is what we were talking about in the video, right? So, yeah, so there's different details of that. I, there's actually other comments saying that Arjun got to pick first, and others say that Duryodhana ah. got to pick first. So it's kind of ah. a little bit unclear, but either way, it doesn't matter. Duryo from what I gather, is Duryodhana was really eager, you know, for the army. Oh, and there was another okay. comment, if we come across it, saying that he uh, that he actually didn't know or believe that Krishna was actually the supreme god. So he didn't even really oh, know. He just saw okay. a massive army and yeah, yeah. wanted the army. Cool. Right. So, oh, uh, that's cool. Alok Kumar Singh. Yeah, so touching on that choice, right, of how Krishna ended up on Arjuna's, Arjuna's army, right? So an interesting fact about choosing Krishna, when Arjuna and Duryodhana went to ask for help, Krishna was sleeping and there was only one seat behind his head. So Duryodhana sat on that and Arjuna, finding no seat, sat to Krishna's feet. When Krishna opened his eyes, he saw Arjuna first and asked him to tell his wish, as Krishna had said that whoever will come in front of him first shall be given whatever he will ah, ask for. Okay. So this one is saying that Arjuna had the first choice, but okay. other interpretations are saying that Duryodhana had the first choice. Okay. Yeah, so another variation of that you know, discussion as to who got the first choice, right? So gave a choice to both Duryodhana and Arjuna. Um, so the Pandavas, Kauravas can either take the army, largest and strongest army at that point in time, had never lost any battle, feared mm. by all kings, so that was Krishna's army, or Lord Krishna himself. Mm -hmm. But since Arjun entered his room first, and Arjun being the younger, he gave the first opportunity to Arjun to ask. Mm. And of course Arjun chose God. 
Oh yeah, and regarding the time freeze thing, so yeah, I mentioned in the video that time kind of stood still. And well, however you interpret that, right? You can think of it as time, as Krishna freezing time, or Krishna just downloading the information to Arjun really, really quickly. You know, some people saying that it happened mm -hmm. in like less than a minute or just a few seconds, mm -hmm. the whole conversation took place. And yeah, in my mind, that sounds like a time freeze. To yeah, me, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like, because the con in my mind, the conversation did happen. They were speaking. And I don't mm -hmm. want to think that he was speaking like so incredible. <laughs> <laughs> like so fast. And then I didn't download it. No, it was still a, a yeah, yeah, conversation yeah. like two people would have. Yeah. And it happened so fast in the yeah. fraction of time mm. that technically time mm. froze. Mm. So mm -hmm. nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what most of the Hindus in our country don't do, you are doing spreading the most essential knowledge. Thank you, guys. I love mm. you a lot. We love you too. Mm -hmm. um, you want to comment on that? Yeah. Thank you. Just uh, so I didn't really realize that you know Dharma wasn't as big perhaps as we thought it was, right? It's, I think it's the degeneration of religion or spiritual values just globally, right? So for our journey, we got to get to the core and the root of the teachings. And then once you get it, then you kind of get it. And it's kind of <laughs> obvious. But so then we can kind of, you know, light the fire and bring it back, yeah. right? Make, yeah, yeah, yeah. make spirituality cool again. Yeah, make right? it fun. It's fun, yeah. right? To learn about the ultimate and what's really going on in yeah. reality. Is, it's, it's incredibly And fun. when you get high fun. on the Dharma instead of drugs? Yeah. yeah. Totally. So let's, Who doesn't want that? Let's bring it back. Yeah. Ecstasy from within, not yeah, yeah, from yeah. without. So we can do it. Like a Gita. Yeah. Brahmic bliss. It's my favorite word at the moment. My favorite <laughs> <laughs> thing yeah, to say. I love it. Mm. Charantasia. Share this as much as possible, guys. <laughs> Let the people know how we are raising the world together. Mm. Also support them as much as possible. Wow. Thank you. Very sweet. <laughs> very, very sweet. Thank I didn't so read much. this. You you reply. This is one of your replies. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that you started replying. I only notice it now that he's replying too. Yeah, I just started recently. I got a little bit more time at work now. So on my breaks, you know, I'm a little bit more relaxed and I'm going in there. And oh, so I started okay. just for my birthday. I wanted to really, you know, reach out and read Aww, all my birthday wishes. And then so it turned sweet. into for the Gita oh, as that's, well. Oh, because that's your, your love. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. Uh, that was really beautiful, very mm -hmm. refreshing. Yeah, very insightful. A lot of things Thank that we you. weren't aware of, like mind-blowing stuff. The size of the armies was crazy, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, test tube babies, uh, it's a little tidbit. So we love this. We're going to do this for every episode going forward. If you like it, if it gets enough views and actual engagement and people enjoy it, if you don't enjoy it, then of yeah. course not. <laughs> so keep the comments going. Uh, you can comment on this video and then we'll keep the comments going in the, the, you know, our chapter studies. Yeah. And then we can react to the comment section just to keep this going. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much for joining again, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Uh, and just help spread the word. Hit that like button. And then that triggers that algorithm so that people know what we did here. So yeah. thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Much love. Please. Peace.